morning, I'm Michael Schantz, and this is horrible, because Milad really should be giving this presentation, but alas, visa issues have prevented this. I'm going to be talking to you about ways of di avoiding disparate outcomes in online advertisements. A while ago, some of my previous research showed that Google was showing more ads promoting the seeking of high-paying jobs to simulated men than simulated women. This could have came about by the advertiser, the Barry Group, targeting men. But there's other ways this could have came about. For example, the Barrett Group could have said, show my ads to anyone. And then Google's ad exchange could have pushed the ads towards the men. This could have happened because Google's ad exchange runs a complicated real-time auction. So when ad slots become available on websites, the uh, Google system offers up those websites to a bunch of advertisers who bid on them in real time. So some other advertiser could have come along, say a makeup company, and said, show my ads only to women, and outbid the Barrett Group, but only for the women. In this case, the Barrett Group would end up being pushed towards the men. Now, the most obvious way of fixing this is to have the Barrett Group run two simultaneous campaigns, one for men and one for women, and have them set at the same size. The problem here is that campaign size is measured in terms of dollars, not the number of, of ad slots won. So the, the Barrett Group would need to predict ahead of time how much larger to make the budget for the female ad campaign given that they're more expensive. And this might not be possible. A, a different approach would be to modify Google's ad exchange so that the auction can guarantee certain properties about how many men and women the ads would be shown to. But this seems difficult because this would require Google to make a change that would affect all the advertisers. And I think it might be hesitant to do such a large global change. So what we did instead was we explored bidding strategies that an advertiser can deploy on its own and have just a local change. These bidding strategies require the advertiser to use a real-time bidding interface so that it can adjust its ads up or down based on whether it's winning too many male or female ad slots. This does add some complexity to the system, but uh, uh, sub demand side platforms could implement this for the, the advertisers. Another complexity is that this bidding strategy is more complicated than the one typically used for second price auctions. In that setting, it's optimal to just bid the immediate reward that you're going to receive from showing the ad to a person without thinking about what happens in the past or in the future. In our case, you have to adjust your ad, uh, bids up or down based on if you're winning too many of one or the other gender. So for example, if you're winning too many men, then you're going to want to bid less on men and only win those cases where you can win them for a, a steep discount. On the other hand, you want to adjust your bids for women up so that you win them not only to receive the immediate reward, but also to you know, make it possible to bid on more men. To balance these trade-offs, what we did was we modeled the problem as an MDP. This MDP has an uncountably infinite number of actions because an advertiser can bid any real value amount of money. To deal with this, we use some analytical tricks to reduce the number of possible actions we need to consider to just one, and then we do something like value iteration. This complicated thing only has to happen once per ad campaign, presuming the auction conditions stay the same, and then each individual auction for an ad slot just corresponds to making a table lookup, so it can run quickly. We evaluated our approach on a combination of real and synthetic data. This plot shows the ratio of the utility of the advertiser subject to the constraints divided by what the utility would have been if the advertiser was not subject to the constraints. The x-axis shows the ratio of how common male and female ad slots are in the setting. The different lines correspond to different approximate parity constraints. For example, the top line requires that the number of male and female ad slots, one, are equal plus or minus 100. This is such a loose constraint, it doesn't actually change the advertiser's utility, which is why it's just a flat line at the ratio of one. The middle line is parity plus or minus 10. Here it shows that if men and women are about equally common, the advertiser only gets a small hit in utility. 
And the bottom line is plus or minus one, where even if the ratio is approximately equal, they lose about a quarter of their utility. Throughout this, I'm assuming that women and men are equally expensive. In this plot, I remove that assumption and instead have women be more expensive than men. You can see that introduces a symmetry to the graph where when women are both expensive and rare, the utility plummets. Instead of plotting different types of parity constraints, this time I plotted what our optimal algorithm does in the black line and what a simple approach which just bids the immediate value would do in the dotted line. You can see our approach outperforms the simple approach. Now, finally, let's consider the ad exchange's revenue. So here I'm plotting the ratio of the ad exchange's revenue with various numbers of constrained advertisers to what their revenue would be if they didn't have any constrained advertisers. The bottom line shows what happens when there is a single constrained advertiser. It shows that the revenue is approximately unchanged, right? it's a flat line down at one. This graph also shows that as the number of constrained advertisers increases, so does the ad exchange's revenue. So I think this should in incentivize ad exchanges to, to implement and offer this as an option to advertisers, or to at least tolerate advertisers who are using this bidding approach on their own. There is some future work we would like to do. For one, we would like to support more types of constraints. Our constraints are pretty strict in that we require these parity things, uh, constraints to hold at every step in the ad auction, as opposed to just at the end of an ad campaign. We did explore a different constraint, which is motivated by the four-fifths rule found in US regulations around disparate impact. You can see what happened about that constraint in the paper. It's pretty much the same story as the one I showed about this additive constraint. We would also like to handle more kinds of sensitive attributes. Our method can already handle things like a non-binary notion of gender, presuming that the ad platforms could actually share that information with us. It can also handle multiple sensitive attributes. But doing these things increases the uh, size of our MDP, so it, it has a trade-off in terms of time complexity. And finally, we would like to resolve various legal issues around this. Arguably, maybe this could be illegal in some settings because it could be seen as disparate treatment. But we're doing it to avoid disparate impact, so I think there's a good argument to be said that this would be legal in many settings, but I'm not a lawyer. If you are, I would love to talk to you about this. I would also love to, anyone, to talk to anyone who works at an, a company with an ad exchange to see whether this kind of approach could work in practice. Thank you.